most pleasant good morning to you wherever you may be. Delaware Hockey Night presented by the Law Office of Long and Greenberg taking the show on the road on this Sunday morning. We're live from the Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Home of the Exton, or home of the Central Penn Panthers, I should say. They take on the Exton Kings in a Delaware Valley Hockey League 16 single A matchup to kick off our Sunday doubleheader. James Witherite joining you from the broadcast perch between the benches at the Regency Ice Rink. Bandbox facility just west of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Home of the Central Penn Panthers, the 16 single A squad, 19 1 and 0 in Delaware Valley Hockey League competition this season under the leadership of head coach Raul Batista. The Exton Kings, 6 10 and 3 led by a fixture in the hockey community in Eastern Pennsylvania, Tom Gibson. We're gonna take inside the glass for the Star Spangled Banner prior to this morning's game. The nation is honored, and it's amazing that an entire symphonic band can fit inside this ring. And then load out in time for the start of the game. Three 17-minute periods in Delaware Valley Hockey League, 16 and 18 U competition for the 19, one and zero Central Penn Panthers. We will see Jacob Kepley between the pipes on the other side of the red line for the Exton Kings, Josh Bernheimer gets the call for bench boss Tom Gibby Gibson. First period faceoff is brought to you by First State Ice Hockey, committed to building the next generation of youth hockey players in and around Delaware under the philosophy of one state, one goal. Learn more about their classes, clinics, and their growing summer tournament program by visiting firststateicehockey.com. Set to go from Regency. Luke Niemeyer and Bryson Parent take the opening draw. It is controlled by Central Penn and Kyler Letts. So it was behind his own goal. In Parent walks this puck to his own blue line, tries to hit Batista with a cross ice pass but he couldn't get stick on puck after gaining the line. Putt wound up from deep in the central pen zone. This brought the other direction by Joey McGonigal, but he's stonewalled at center. Batista tries to drive through up the near corner after gaining the Exton zone, but he couldn't connect with Jonathan Boozer directly behind the net. 
We've got a man down in the Exton zone. The Kings, Luke Niemeyer, slow to get on his feet, but he recovers and heads to the bench. Aiden Reedy chases down the puck behind his own goal. Carries this up the left side for Central Penny. Beats two-ply four checking pressure. He's angled by Geary to the near wall. And in comes Aiden Reedy up the near side. He tried to center nobody home. Kane Lehman closes to it. But a pair of red-clad Exton Kings stood between him and the first A-grade scoring chance of the game. We're a minute and a half into the first of three 17-minute periods. Scoreless as yet from the Regency Ice Rink. Puck is tied up behind the central pen goal. Here's Jonah Kerr flipping it off his backhand from his own blue line, and this will come back and icing with 15 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first period. Faceoff will be spotted to the left of Jacob Kepley. Kane Lehman taking it for the Panthers. Anthony Pucci in the circle for the Exton Kings. Panthers work out of their zone. Lehman gained the Exton line. Centering pass from behind the goal comes out to Lehman, but he can't connect on the doorstep. And this puck sails all the way back to the far corner of the central penzo. Lehman corrals it. Sets up a two-on-one. Lehman's shot was stick-checked by Mikulowski high and away. And this puck is contested in front of the Exton bench. Barely held in by Stoffer. He feeds to Mishner across ice. Mishner walks in, and he scores to put the central Penn Panthers up early. Nick Missioner on the two on one. Gives the Central Penn Panthers the early advantage. So it was Bennett Stoffer with the lone assist on the Missioner goal. And our first penalty of the game is coming up. Three minutes and three seconds. Into the first. After putting the Panthers on the board, Nicholas Mishner gets himself a two minute reprieve, guilty of tripping. And that sends the Panthers to a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill. Schedule your first cleaning today by visiting DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Joshua Frank carried the puck end to end to regain the attacking zone for the Panthers. Backhand shot off the wraparound. Found the wrong side of the net. This is cleared by Malatesta up ice into a one-on-one. -on -one. Battle for position and possession. Sees Anthony Pucci tied up in the low slot. And his scoring chance nullified. Dan Geary recovers. Walks up the short neutral zone here at Regency. He tried to roll the puck in deep behind the central pen goal. A stick check sent that puck just wobbling in rather than taking a more direct path. Lentz to Frank. Frank hassled by Quinn Rafter. Was angled to the far corner of the Exton zone. Frank stays with the play, rolls the puck into the near corner. Nobody to maintain. Central Penn's momentum. And out come the Kings. Back through neutral territory where Geary, sure to stay on side, kicks the puck back into Panther territory. Now they give up a two on one. Lehman. Tries to bulldoze forward past Maxwell. But he lost his balance and ended up 
Resetting in the corner. Lehman brings the puck back into his own end. The Panthers will try to regroup more in earnest. Jack Gibbon under four checking pressure from McGonigal. Hits Reedy with the outlet pass. It was broken up by Quinn Rafter just above the central pen blue line, but his entry to the Panther zone is called back offside. With 12.15 to go in the first period, the central pen Panthers up 1-0. Over the Exton Kings in the first half of our doubleheader from Regency, a Delaware Valley Hockey League 16 single A division matchup. Gibbon clears. This comes back in icing. The puck sailed beyond Kopech's reach. And then past the Exton goal line. Six seconds remaining on the Missioner penalty. And the faceoff comes to the right of Jacob Kepley, who's had an awfully light workload for the first five minutes of this contest. I don't think he's seen a single shot on goal. Panthers are back to full strength. Imparent rules in, reels in the puck, I should say, behind the goal, leaves it to Asher Paul Putt, working the left point. And behind it goes to Boozer. Net front feed, Batista. Canceled out net front, Corden Kopech, offering defensive resistance close to home. Malatesta clears, Batista recovers. Putt, now to Boozer at his own blue line. Boozer cuts to the left, Dots gains the Exton zone, but has checked off the puck, protecting the point with Lentz. Imparent flips this in off his backhand, off the D-to-D -D pass. Net front feed comes back to Imparent off Boozer's stick from below the goal, but he can't get the shot away from close range. Boozer again from the half wall, dot to dot feed. That shot from Batista is stick behind the Exton goal. And the Panthers will get themselves another attacking zone faceoff as a result of the Kings icing. Six minutes, 15 seconds to go. Or rather, six minutes, 15 seconds elapsed in the first period. We haven't had our coffee yet this morning. And the Central Penn Panthers on home ice. The one nothing lead over the Exton Kings. As we mentioned, Panthers only have suffered one defeat so far this season. And stand atop the DVHL standings in the 16A bracket. Miller worked the left point. Penalty coming up against the Kings. As Kane Lehman got tripped up. Quinn Rafter off for tripping. 6.56 into the first. And as a result, the Central Penn Panthers are on their first primo power play of the morning. Visit your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on, Kennet, on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Or order your next party tray online at primohoagies.com. They bring you this power play. And all Central Penn Panthers power plays here for today's doubleheader. Kerr's long shot, stick checked off its line. He gets his own rebound, tries to wrap one around the backhand on the doorstep from Kane Lehman was held onto by Bernheimer for a pause in play with 9.24 to go in the first period and 40 seconds elapsed. In the Quinn Rafter tripping minor.
Niemeyer was escorted to the gate. Looks like some sort of issue. Panthers control the faceoff, which restarts play. Gibbon, cut, leaves this to him. Parent, he tried to go top corner on the welcome mat, but the glove of Josh Bernheimer got in the way. There was that shot, our replay buffering a little bit. Parent with a solid scoring chance right on the welcome mat. And here he finishes. To give the Panthers their second. Bryson Parent with the power play goal. It came with 8.42 to go in the first period. So Boozer and Putt with the assists. On the apparent power play goal. Another pair of net front chances coming off the stick of Nathan Kohada. Big brother Dennis played defense for Millersville University. Delaware Hockey Night is brought to you by the law office of Long and Greenberg, opening their doors in February to serve your personal injury and workers' compensation needs. The Law Office of Long and Greenberg. Presenting sponsors of Delaware Hockey Night here in 2023, and we've just signed on to do it all again in 2024 as well. Frank at the center of a two-a-side battle. Seleski walks forward, tried to center the puck, Intended for Gupta, but Lentz took it away. The shot for Mishner was bobbled by Bernheimer. Rebound chance swatted wide. Here's Lentz from right down the pipe. Stick save by Bernheimer. Gives us a pause in play as he freezes the puck with 7.12 to go in the first period. It's a 2 nothing hockey game. The Central Penn Panthers in early control of the terms. over the Exton Kings. Miller fanned on the puck briefly at the point, but had time to regain. Walker can keep the greatest of gap control at the, the point area. Here he plays the body on Miller. Stoffer tries to walk forward, lost the puck. It was cleared out by Geary. So the Panthers have to reset in the neutral zone. They do but Jonah Kerr's advance was slowed up by the close to home Maxwell. Stretch pass from Lehman to Kerr, he gains red before dumping the puck. No, he didn't. He was just shy of the red line before letting that go, so this is gonna come back and icing with 6.34 to go in the first period. Central Penn pinned in their zone, but they've got the comfort of a two nothing lead. Pucci and Lehman square off in the face-off circle, far side. Trying to walk forward off the dot. 
was Geary, but to no avail. Jonah Kerr clears. It's turned back in from the neutral zone. Recovered by Lehman. Lehman works this up ice. Kerr pokes it into the corner. Centering pass was intended for Lehman, but a stick check slowed him up on the welcome mat. Lehman leads a three on two. He takes aim from the dot, gets his own rebound after Bernheimer stepped well out of the crease to make the initial save. Bernheimer's back in position. Stoffer throws one in from the top of the right circle. Aguirre stick check sends that shot offline. Back it comes to Kerr, taking a check in the corner from Pucci away from the puck. Reedy protects for the Panthers, looking to extend their 2-0 advantage. This is recovered by Imparent after Geary pushed play through the short neutral zone. Imparent shoots from the bottom of the circle. Found nothing but iron on that chance. McGonagall clears, Malatesta pursues. Putt turns it back the other way. McGonagall flips the puck off his backhand into a congested slot. Gibbon got the first piece of the puck. It was then cleared out by Jaden Batista. Four forty to go in period number one. Net front setup. Boozer couldn't connect on him. Parent setup from the corner. Malatesta recovers this puck for the Kings. Headmans it to McGonagall up the neutral zone, but he fanned on it, trying to flip it back deeper into the central pen end. So a race developed for the biscuit, and Jaden Batista works it back up ice for the Panthers. Ahead to Boozer, trying to walk in from the corner, but he's steered below the goal. Boozer dodges a check from Mikulowski. Working below the goal, Batista puts one on the doorstep for him, parent, but it was blocked down by Joey McGonigal, holding close to his netminder. Follow-up shot came from Boozer. It bounced behind the cage. Batista, backdoor pass to Boozer, bobbled on the net front. And this is cleared out by McGonagall, but not free of the zone. Gibbon protected center point and barreled right back in. Three and a half minutes to go in the first period. Central Penn with a 2-0 lead over the Exton Kings in this DVHL 16 AA matchup. Centering pass to Batista resulted in a tip puck just wide of the post. Rebound contested in the near corner. This fired across ice by Bryce Imparent and the slapper from Gibbon at the left point was deflected wide. Boozer cycles to Imparent. High pass to Gibbon. He tries to flip it to Batista. It ricochets off the corner boards at the far side. Batista back to Gibbon. Poke check free of him by Joey McGonigal. And here comes Leonardo Kozic. Kozic lost the puck between the circles, trying to crash through an, up, through an open slot. That breakaway, ultimately a failed opportunity for the Exton Kings. Maxwell leaves this from his own blue line up the far boards, and it will come back offside. An offside pass will send the faceoff back to the nearest dot before that pass was let go. It'll be spotted just above the Exton blue line. Planning for retirement doesn't just happen overnight. For 35 years, Limestone Pension Associates has helped small businesses craft and administer pension plans for their workforces. Learn more at limestonepension.net. Yates protects the left point a second time. He throws the puck off the backboards, race on for it. Kohada pursued, but to no avail. Here's a two-on-one for the Kings. Gupta outraced to the puck, though, by Kyle Yates in the near corner of the central pen zone. Lentz backhands it free. It's volleyed back the other way by Maxwell. We've entered the final two minutes of the first period the Regency ice rink and an icing against the Exton Kings. 
will set up an attacking zone faceoff for the Panthers, looking for their third goal of the first period. Joshua Frank in to take the draw. And he does so. Across from Pucci. Lentz works the far corner for the Panthers. He caroms the puck below the goal, held in by Nathan Kohata. Final 100 seconds of the first period upon us. Geary takes this puck away, but could not clear. Lentz in the slot. Frank tries to get a shot through. It's punched in on the doorstep. And the Panthers have gone up 3-0. Frank directed the puck toward the cage, but it was tipped in at the edge of the crease. And Nicholas Missioner. As you heard, it was Missioner getting his second of the game. Lentz and Frank with the assists. We've entered the final minute of play in the first period. A takeaway by Anthony Pucci. Leads the Exxon rush up ice. His shot from long distance rang off the post. Rebound controlled at the near half wall by Jonah Kerr and cleared to Reedy via a cross ice feed. Reedy working below the net, tries to set up Kerr on the welcome map, but he was double teamed. Grafter got a shove in on him to disrupt his shot opportunity. No icing as the Kings clear. Stoffer from behind his own net gives the puck away to the other 17, Quinn Rafter, after what was a failed breakout pass. Final three seconds of the period upon us. And Kerr will not be able to get a final shot away. The score through one period, Central Penn Panthers three, Exton King zero. This is Delaware Hockey Night presented by Long and Greenberg. We'll be back after the first From the There's nothing all American quite like a good old fashioned barbecue. Sid's Barbecue and Jerky brings the most tender and flavorful pulled pork, brisket, and barbecue chicken to the tri state area and is sure to turn your next gathering into a truly all-American event. Visit SIDS on Ridge Road in Claymont, Delaware, or place your next catering order at SIDSBBQAndJerky.com. Let's face it, saving for retirement doesn't happen overnight. It takes planning, and Limestone Pension Associates has spent the past 35 years helping small businesses do just that. Limestone specializes in crafting, planning, and handling the day-to-day -day administration of qualified pension plans tailor-fit to your company's needs and objectives. To schedule a consultation, call 302-479-8817 or visit limestonepension.net to learn more. Time for the second period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Thank you, Norm Borg. Welcome back into Delaware Hockey Night, presented by Long and Greenberg. The show's on the road for a Sunday doubleheader from the Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And the Central Penn Panthers 16 single A squad dominated that first period. Two goals from Nicholas Mishner, a power play goal from Bryce and Parent. And they're up 3-0 over the Exton Kings. 
second period brought to you by the Hooper family, longtime supporters of University of Delaware Blue Hens hockey and of today's coverage of the Central Penn Panthers taking on the Exton Kings in DVHL competition. Six seconds into the period. And a quick shot is turned aside by Bernheimer. Faceoff will come to his left, Jonathan Boozer, and across from McGonagall. Boozer won the draw, but he gave the puck away to Kozic. And Kozic draws the penalty. Just 13 seconds into the second. Asher Paul Putt ruled off for interference. Thirteen seconds into the second period, putting the Panthers on a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill. Schedule your first cleaning at DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Face off at the far dot of the central pen zone. Starts this PK, Lehman could not clear as Maxwell protected the left point. Maxwell regains its center. Kozic backhands the puck as far as the central pen blue line, which was held by Kohada. Walking forward now is Reedy. Shot steered wide. Rebound controlled by Michael Malatesta. Lehman tried to block down the point, but to no avail. Malatesta found McGonigal through traffic up the near side. Long shot comes in. This is covered and held by Kepley for a break in the action. 50 seconds into the second period. Faceoff comes to Kepley's left. Geary and Lehman square off. Rafter holds the zone at the right point for Central Pen, or for Exxon, I should say. Both teams with red as one of their primary colors. But it is Exton wearing their away red kits today, Central Penn clad in their home whites. Here attacking from right to left in the second period with the long change in effect. Walker carries the puck in, Geary barely onside. Walker throws it into the slot, gives the puck away to Maddox Miller. And we're tied up at the center of a two-a-side scrum, right in front of the Kings bench. And this puck is worked free by Rafter. Maxwell fans on it behind his own goal. Mishner looked ready to pounce, but couldn't get stick on puck at the edge of the blue paint. Icing is waved off as Bennett Stoffer had the opportunity to play the puck before the goal line. Miller works it up ice, pursued by Mishner, chipped by Maxwell, but Mishner won that battle in the near corner. On the wraparound, he risks the puck through the top of the crease, well off his intended line. Frank gets it back to Mishner. Net front setup goes to Frank, but it was stick checked away by Quinn Rafter, net front. Mishner just held the zone after the Panthers have gone back full strength. Rafter's backhand sends the puck into the corner boards, where Geary was unable to clear. Miller couldn't set up Lentz. On the centering pass, Maddox Miller did hold the zone, though, after Stoffer was unable to protect the point cleanly. He was taken off his feet just inside the Exton blue line. Lentz pinches through at the wall to get past Walker. Odd man rushed down low for the Panthers. Boozer centering to Lentz. Boozer's shot is in. So Jonathan Boozer gets a fourth for the Panthers. And they continue to roll over the Exton Kings on this Sunday morning.
So officially a 3-10 Jonathan Boozer from Kyler Lentz, making this now a 4-0 hockey game. And another penalty about to be assessed. Ayaz Rebiak called for hooking. Twenty-seven seconds after the Boozer goal. So the Central Penn Panthers find themselves back on the Primo Power Play. Visit your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, or order your next party tray online at primohoagies.com. Wow! Boozer again. One for the thumb. as he opens fire from the mid-slot. Gorgeous centering pass. Boozer stick handles, goes glove side. And a second power play goal for the Central Penn Panthers. Makes this a 5 nothing game. All of 10 seconds gone on the power play. When Jonathan Boozer went top shelf for his second of the game. Putt gets a shove from McGonagall after protecting the right point. Kerr works this low. Holding net front was Rafter to break up that setup. Gibbons shot from the high slot caught and held by Bernheimer for a break in the action with 12.14 to go in second period play. Make a truly all-American meal the centerpiece of your next team event or special occasion. Sits Barbecue and Jerky in Claymont, Delaware, not far from Fred Rust Arena or Iceworks. Can cater your next group event, offering pulled pork, brisket, and barbecue chicken on a daily basis, along with a variety of sauces and sides sure to please any appetite. Visit Sid's at Sweet C26, the Tri-State Industrial Center on Ridge Road in Claymont, Delaware. Open Monday through Saturday for takeaway lunch or to place a catering order. Great option for a team meal next time you're at the Junior Blue Hens, you're at the Phantoms. Even the Quakers not too far away from Sid's Barbecue and Jerky. Consider them for your next team meal and you can find out more at SidsBBQandJerky.com. Five and a half minutes gone in the second period of this Central Penn Tour de Force. The 16 single A matchup, they lead the Exton Kings 5-0. Lehman gets a shove astern from Maxwell, trying to get a shot on net from close range. Kane Lehman back into his own zone, circles behind his own goal. He gets the puck back up the near side, throws it in from the blue line, it takes a bounce off the end boards. Lentz to Mishner. Back to Lentz, it comes give and go. Hard shot, stick save made. By Bernheimer, and he holds. For a pause in play with 10.51 to go in the second period. There's the initial stick save, puck was loose, and Bernheimer falls on the puck. To force the stoppage with plenty of traffic in front of him. Miller one-timer. 
Denied by Bernheimer, but he couldn't cover up the puck for the stoppage. It's fed now to Lentz through the slot. He turns and shoots. And Bernheimer effectively sits on this puck to bring us a stoppage in play. Is it looked like the puck ended up trickling into the netting. The play was whistled dead. At the moment, Josh Bernheimer covered it up. So the faceoff comes to the near side. Storming forward is Frank, tied up on the doorstep by a nameless number six, and this will be an icing. Against the Kings. Friends, if you're like me, healthy living is important. The Delaware trash can cleaning can help you and your family stay healthy at home. With periodic sanitization and disinfecting of your trash and recycling bins, using high pressure hot water jets that kill over 99% of the germs and bacteria in your cans, keeping your home and family healthy. Schedule your first cleaning today. Visit DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. You can learn more. You can sign up for cleanings right there. The shot from Stoffer was steered wide. Imperant and Malatesta confront each other for a loose puck in the near corner. Bryce Imperant there. He sets up Batista from center point. Long shot. Stick down net front by Malatesta, but not cleared. Stoffer again holds the right point. And his Central Penn Panthers are five in front. Working below the cage, Boozer. Sticked down by Akshay Gupta. Boozer separated from the puck. Mallet. Esta lays a shoulder in on him. Puck rolls to the corner. Kopech can't clear. Boozer strips it backhand. No! He gets his own, I would say, rebound, but recovers his own error, I should say, more appropriately. Now Boozer. Leaves it to Miller at the left point. Eight minutes gone of the second period. Gupta plays the body on Boozer to separate him from the puck in the near corner. It's worked lower yet. Malatesta recovers after a collision with Batista. Imparent regains for Central Penn, kicks the puck to Boozer. He's hassled in the corner by Kozic. Around the horn it comes to Miller. He winds up slapper from 40 feet, clears the crossbar, rings off the back glass. Boozer to Stoffer again at the right point. Headman pass to Batista at the dock. Cross lot feed Boozer's shot as he seeks his third goal of the game. Was saved by Bernheimer crossing post to post. Malatesta finally works this clear for Tom Gibson's Exton Kings. Bryce and Parent up the middle. Off the crossbar! His chance for a second goal. Foiled by the iron behind Bernheimer. Two on one the other way was led by Pucci, but foiled by a puck handling mistake. Stoffer fails to clear. Geary protected briefly. Kerr swatted the puck out of harm's way. Back to Kopeck, back in the Exton zone. Kopech couldn't stretch this out. Reedy on the doorstep. Cleared the crossbar and the net was dislodged. Behind Josh Bernheimer with 7.30. Three to go in the second period of a 5 nothing hockey game. And according to the USA Hockey Rulebook, that dislodged net. Enough to give us a stoppage in play regardless of how play continued otherwise. Face-off came to the left of Josh Bernheimer. The Kings sent the puck the entire length of the ice nearly. Before Mishner recovered. No, that was Asher Paul putt. Lehman lays a shoulder on Walker, trying to establish closer position in the central pen zone. But a textbook shoulder check turned the momentum now from right to left. 
putt at the right point. Threw the puck through traffic off Bernheimer's pads. Reedy walking forward, couldn't jam one in from close. Putt third time, not a charm here. This rolls to the near half wall, held by Gibbon. It was Kerr with the third shot. I stand corrected. Kerr again, puts this through the low slot. Gibbon couldn't get stick on puck on the welcome mat. Rafter bodies him down while play continues below the cage. Lehman surveys his options, putting on the brakes just above the corner board's far side. He walks in, tried to hit Aiden Reedy on a backdoor setup, but the redirect was wide. Gibbon turns, shoots, brings the puck off the corner glass. Reedy's backhand works the puck low again. Pucci plays the body on Lehman. Meanwhile, Asher Paul Putt protects the left point. Works the puck in low. Geary tried to clear it off the corner glass, but his Karam shot hit extension in the glass and effectively slowed up, enabling Central Penn to maintain their attacking position. 5.45 to go in second period play. The Central Penn Panthers on their abbreviated home ice, this neutral zone if you haven't seen it as opposed to 50 feet deep, looks to be about 35. So lots of space taken out of the neutral zone. Giving the Panthers a distinct home ice advantage. The opposite way that the Delaware Junior Blue Hens have a home ice advantage at Fred Rust Arena by way of the international size sheet. Harkens back to the days when every rink had little idiosyncrasies about them. The Boston Garden was short as... I couldn't get on the bench. I couldn't get on the bench. I couldn't get on the bench. You may or may not remember. And the Central Penn Panthers are going to be called guilty of too many players on the ice with 4.51 to go in the second period. Much to the objection of the Panthers' Jack Gibbon, who is tapped to serve the penalty at 12.09 second period. So a bench minor for that flub line change leaves the Panthers on a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill. Akshay Gupta wins the draw. Malatesta held the left point, tried to work the puck low to Kozic, but couldn't connect with him. Rafter protects, shoots. Puck bounced off the end boards around the left point, held by Malatesta again. To Kozic, across to Rafter, long shot from the right point, got through, sticked away by Kepley to the far wall. This is pushed clear by Mishner, two on one. Mishner up the middle. Hard wrister over the crossbar, rang off the glass. Malatesta brings it back the other direction for the Kings. Gupta tags up, Malatesta enters up the far side. He takes the shot for himself, kept wide by Kohata. Easy save by Kepley. And the Panthers again clear at the midpoint of this Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill. Rafter could not clear the puck. Yates protected the left point for the Central Penn Panthers, who now get some fresh penalty killers off. Lehman breaks up the stretch pass from Malatesta into the Central Penn zone. Puck is contested directly beneath our broadcast perch. As you may know, it's a little cozy in here. Fans lining the glass all through the neutral zone, in fact, from corner to corner. There is no dedicated seating area here at Regency. 
comes McGonagall as Stoffer's stick check separates him from the puck. And now Stoffer works it across ice out into the neutral zone. Where it's advanced further by Asher, by Jonah Kerr. Kerr, the recipient of a centering pass, looking for a sixth extant or a sixth central pen goal. Was disrupted on his shot opportunity. And trying to set up Lehman and Stoffer at the point. Geary took the puck away. Stoffer off the toe of his stick. Feeds it to Miller under four checking pressure and Bryce and Parent. Grace is now up the left dots to set up an A-grade chance. Across to his backhand on the doorstep. Bernheimer made the save. The follow-up on the welcome at two was wide. We've entered the final two minutes of the second period of a 5-0 hockey game. Advantage the Central Penn Panthers on home ice. Lehman, cross-slot feed to Reedy Fandon. Imparent in the near corner. Tries to set one up again in the slot. Reedy a second time. Turns and gets a shot away here, but Bernheimer makes the stick save. And icing against the Kings gives us a pause and play with a minute and 34 seconds to go in the second period. And we'll tell you of the new gold standard for digital media solutions for small businesses. 412 Communications offers web and graphic design, social media consultation, public relations, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions like the broadcast you're watching right now, and more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. Gibbon, backdoor feed to him, parent fan dog. Asher Paul Putt held the right point. This shot from Gibbon off the headman pass rang off the post behind Bernheimer. Imparent checked into the frame of the net by Mikulowski. Looked like he was going to try to set up a Michigan. One minute remaining in the period as announced by the public address announcer here at Regency. Always good to hear that one minute announcement made. That along with stoppage music and well, we're all getting rickrolled now. They do a good job with the game day atmosphere here at Regency. Stoppage music, goal and penalty announcements. Despite it being a bandbox facility, the game day presentation very strong. Final 35 seconds of second period play. Asher Paul Putt leaves this to Boozer. Boozer up the middle. Imparent's got a one on one. Gupta nearly caught up with him. Imparent lost control of the puck in the high slot. He was going at a little bit too high a rate of speed to maintain control, and that enabled the X and Kings back check to fortify. And Imparent. Battling for the puck below the goal. Cross-check Gupta in the back, and that will sit him down for two minutes. Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill time. For the Central Penn Panthers, but they've got the luxury of a 5-0 lead. Malatesta's shot from center point was wide. Panthers clear. The final seconds tick away, and the second period is complete. Through 34 minutes, it's Central Penn Panthers 5, Exton King 0. This is Delaware Hockey Night, presented by the law office of Long and Reader. Think about it. The trash and recycling bins in our homes, even with normal use, are places where harmful bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli can multiply by the thousands. But like anyone, you want to keep your home and your family as healthy as possible. Delaware Trash Can Cleaning can help. They sanitize your trash cans with high-pressure hot water jets that can kill over 99% of the germs and bacteria in your cans in just a few minutes. 
to schedule your first cleaning. Call 302-310-9075 or visit DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Watching the game or tailgating with friends? Score big and serve in style with Primo Hoagies Party Trays and Sampler Platters. There is no bigger crowd pleaser than Primo Hoagies. Made only with the highest quality Thuman's meats and cheese. Sliced fresh to order and served on Primo's award-winning seated rolls. You get the best tasting hoagies in the area and save yourself the prep time. Stop into your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania or order your tray online at PrimoHoagies.com. It's not just a hoagie, it's a Primo. It's time for the third period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Watching the game or tailgating with friends? Score big and serve in style with Primo Hoagies party trays and sampler platters. There is no bigger crowd pleaser. The Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This Sunday's home for Delaware Hockey Night TV. Later on today, we were scheduled to be at the Spring Mountain Ski Resort in Schwenksville, Pennsylvania for University of Delaware Division Three action. However, due to significant rain in the forecast, their game against Buffalo State is being called off. Third period begins, a minute and 47 seconds remaining on the Exton Kings power play as they try to erase at least some of their 5-0 deficit to Central Penn. Exton playing out of power play rinks. In the exurbs of Philadelphia, home of a new Eastern Hockey League premier team this season, the Pennsylvania Huntsman. And we learned recently they'll be icing an EHL team in the top division of Tier 3 junior hockey as well coming up next year. Exciting developments at power play rinks. Tom Gibson, hockey director for the Exton Kings, staying plenty busy with those new developments as well. Always good to see Gibby in our travels. One of the sport's true good guys. Cross-ice pass from Kozic to McGonagall. Couldn't escape the zone. Now Kozic carries the puck in over the central pen blue line. The shot from McGonagall. Bounces into the glove of Kepley and he holds for a pause in play with 15.50 to go in regulation. 37 seconds left on this Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill for the, Exton, or for the central pen Panthers, the Exton Kings with the man advantage for just over a half minute. Pucci takes the draw across from Lehman. We caught a glimpse of Bryson Parent raising the roof at the sound of his name. But certainly, he prefers to hear his name after a goal as opposed to a cross check. Depends on the circumstances, we suppose. Pucci to Walker. Miller steals the puck for the Panthers. Caroms it out from behind his own goal. Mikulowski barely holds the point. Long shot, sticked away by Stauffer. Puck is loose in front, and this is covered up by Jacob Kepley, right as the apparent penalty expires. Nearly friendly fire.
as Bennett Stauffer came perilously close to directing the puck into his own net. Bryson Parent to Gibbon. Cross ice feed to Miller. Back it comes to Asher Paul Putt. Volley back across neutral ice up the middle by Maxwell. In comes Geary. Shot sticked away. Geary gets his own rebound in the corner. He feeds to Mikulowski. Long chance from the point was blocked in net front traffic. And Gibbon clears. Here comes Jonathan Boozer looking to complete the hat trick, and he does. Jonathan Boozer makes this a 6 0 hockey game with 14 31 to go in regulation. We believe now with the six goal advantage, a running clock goes into effect. So a hat trick for Jonathan Boozer off the setup from Gibbon. Making this now a six nothing hockey game. Gibbon looking for the convert. Couldn't split the uprights. Lehman denied by a Bernheimer glove save. Running clock is in effect with the six goal advantage in the third period. And Gupta wins the face off to the right of his netminder over Lehman. This is slammed up ice by Rafter for an icing. Puck returned by Putt. For a quick restart, Gupta again wins the draw. Rafter gets this to Seleski. Putt steals before the zone is cleared. So the Panthers continue to pour it on. Lehman's net front chance ended up in the pads of Bernheim. Centering feed, Reedy with the convert. It is 7-0. In favor of the Central Penn Panthers. Aiden Reedy gets his name on the score sheet, 409 into the third. Panthers goal for the number 16, Aiden Reedy. Assisted by number 58, Delvin Kerr. And number 22, Kane Lehman. Down on the goal, 1348 in the third period. Kerr and Lehman with the assists on the Reedy goal at 409 in the third. Which makes this a 7 0 hockey game. And Parent from long range. Saw his shot waffle boarded aside by Bernheim. Kopech can't clear. Lentz works this forward on the doorstep. Joshua Frank couldn't finish off the headman feed. Icing waved off as the Kings clear. Kohada was ruled able to play the puck in parent, chased it behind his own goal. And here come the Panthers again on a four on two. Frank lowers his shoulder, tries to bulldoze toward the net. Lentz gets a shot through from the dot. This is caught and held by Bernheimer with 11-14 and counting to go in the third period. Whenever you make the trip to Delaware, if you're tailgating at Fred Rust Arena or if you're watching the game on Delaware Hockey Night, whatever the case, score big and serve in style with Primo Hoagie's party trays and sampler platters. 
There is no bigger crowd pleaser than Primo Hoagies made only with the highest quality Thuman's meats and cheese, sliced fresh to order and served on Primo's award-winning seeded rolls. You get the best tasting hoagies in the area and you save yourself the prep time. Stop into your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, or order your next party tray online at primohoagies.com. It's not just a hoagie, it's a Primo. Yates, the recipient of a net front feed, was canceled out by Pucci in the net front area. Back it goes to Batista. Centering pass, Yates couldn't connect on the doorstep. Rafter canceled him out with his hulking net front presence here. Batista, again to Yates, a little more space this time. He shot from 20 feet, and Batista finished to put the Panthers up 8-0. Jaden Batista. Off the rebound of Yates' initial shot. As we waited for the public address announcer to fill in the gaps for us, Batista from Yates. 7.06 in the third period. That extended the Panthers' lead to 8 0. Pucci pushes forward but into traffic. Lehman takes the puck away, walks it up ice, tried to switch over to his backhand to get some space from Heaster. The pass ahead to Pucci failed to connect. Pucci tagged up before Walker wristed the puck into the central pen zone. We are nearing the halfway point of the third period. Right now we're approaching the halfway point. As Lehman is bodied down in front of his own bench. And now we are past the halfway point. Our videographer Ray Catolo saw what we did there. Miller works the puck around behind his own net to Reedy. He's going to find more space where he thought he was going to find more space up the far side, but he put on the brakes as Walker stayed with him. And now Reedy carries the puck up ice himself along the far dots. He circles below the cage. Seleski separated Reedy from the puck. Maxwell couldn't walk it free. Asher Paul putt holds center point. He was challenged directly by Seleski, but he still got the puck in behind the Exton goal. So play migrates below the cage into a side scrum, controlled by Malatesta. And this will be walked up by Walker through neutral territory. And a very clearly Akshay Gupta was offside, bringing us a stoppage in the action, but not on the clock. With just under seven and a half minutes to go. Coming up next, the 18 AA Central Penn Panthers will take on the Westtown Quakers in the second half of our DHN Sunday doubleheader. Brought to you from Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That game slated to go off around about 12:35. Six forty-three to go. Putt rolls the puck in from the right point. To Mishner. He flips the puck over the crossbar into the slot. Gibbon couldn't chase it down. Lentz failed to handle it cleanly as well. Puck won the race against Rafter to recover the puck for the Panthers inside their blue line. McGonagall played the body on Asher Paul Putt in the corner. Mishner protects for the Panthers. Mikulowski and 
he collide in the far corner. And the Kings clear. Gibbon hassled by Myra's Rebiak. Gibbon up the middle carries the puck in over the line well before Kyle Eads can tag up. So play is offside again. With five and a half minutes to go. And Central Penn coasting. And with a pretty handy lead from this point on. Gates off the centering pass from Boozer. Threw the puck off the pads of Bernheimer who follows up with a freeze to deny the rebound chance. Final five minutes of the contest. Face off to the left of Bernheimer. Shot rolled in from Batista at the top of the left circle was just wide. This is cleared, steadied by Kepler. Played up the near boards, pushed by Yates over the line, turned by Heaster the other way. Boozer recovers for the Panthers as we come to the final four minutes of the contest. Make it nine. Johnny Boozer's got four. Here it comes again. Oh, Yates got that one, it appeared, from here. We'll find out the official ruling from downstairs. It was indeed Yates. That goal at 13.05 in the third. So Boozer gets himself a second assist to go with his hat trick. He's had a hand in five of Central Penn's nine goals. We have entered the antepenultimate minute of the game. Stoffer tied up with Kopech. Lazily leaves the puck ahead to Lehman. Across to Miller, who fires an offside pass up the left wing boards to Gibbon. That advance nullified by an offside infraction. Another stoppage as Bernheimer slows up the Panthers attempting to crash the net. Final two minutes are upon us. Held in at the point by Lentz. Now down to the final 70. Seleski walks in up the near side for the Kings, has some support from Gupta after Mishner angled him outside the dots. Lentz leads a three on two. 
Lentz's shot from the top of the right circle was sticked wide. This is tipped behind the cage by Heaster. Recovered by McGonagall, he walks up the right dots. Kings trying to get one in the final half minute. McGonagall couldn't, Heaster from the left point couldn't either. Walker engaged by Stoffer. Coming up high, McGonagall throws a shoulder on Stoffer. It was separated from the puck behind the net. This will be an ice. No, it won't. It was waved off as Bernheimer played the puck out of the crease. Time runs out, and the Central Penn Panthers improve to 21 and 0 on the season by way of a 9 0 win over the Exton Kings. Jacob Kepley with an easy day in the office and plenty of support up front. Jonathan Boozer with a hat trick and two assists, earning first star honors. Nicholas Mishner with a goal and an assist, second star. Kyler Lentz with two assists. Are there two goals? And an assist for Nicholas Mishner. The second star in today's SIDS, three stars of the game presented by Sid's Barbecue and Jerk. So Central Penn improves to 21 and zero by virtue of their nine nothing route of the Exton Kings who fall to six, 11 and three on the season. This takes us to midway in our Sunday doubleheader. A fresh sheet of ice will be applied. When we come back, it will be the Central Penn 18 AA squad hosting the West Town Quakers in what has the potential to be a playoff preview in DVHL 18 AA competition. Central Penn 9, X to 0. For Ray Catolo, James Witherite, thanking you for your company. We'll be back in just a little bit with the second half of our Sunday doubleheader.
Welcome back inside the Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, home of the Central Penn Panthers. Their 18 AA squad is set to take on the Westtown Quakers and what has the potential to be a preview of the upcoming Delaware Valley Hockey League playoffs. James Witherite joining you from the broadcast perch. We're going to head inside the glass for the Star Spangled Banner before we talk about this game in detail. Due honor has been afforded the nation. And the second half of our Sunday DHN doubleheader from the Regency Ice Rink is about to get underway. Will Younger and Eric Lowry's Central Penn Panthers are 10-6-0 on the season, sitting right now fourth in the eight-team DVHL 18 AA table. The Westtown Quakers at 9-5-2 our fifth, led by Eric Nodal. These teams part of a hotly contested mid-division. The DVHL with the Junior Blue Hens of Newark, Delaware, currently sitting in third spot. Top five teams qualify for the playoffs. And it's very likely that We'll see these two teams meeting in Aston, Pennsylvania at Iceworks in three weeks in postseason play. First period brought to you by First State Ice Hockey, committed to building the next generation of youth hockey players in and around Delaware under the philosophy of one state, one goal. Learn more about their classes, clinics, and their growing summer tournament program by visiting firststateicehockey.com. Anthony Culp got a shot away from the top of the right circle. It was sticked wide. Matt Kepley plays this up the near boards and into the Quaker zone. It came from his blue line, so it will come back and icing. 24 seconds into the first period. C.J. Ulmer getting the call between the pipes for the Panthers. And handling the net mining duties on the other side, Aiden Rogacki. Son of good guy Steve Rogacki. And now his Quakers flip the puck up ice. But Jackson Aukamp took it away from the path of Anthony Culp. Lucas could not hold the point. Walking in is Fullerton, chasing the puck to the near corner, and Parent plays the body on him. Parker Nassar joins this battle. 
The puck is wristed free by Jackson Ockamp. Stevenson could not hold the near point for the Quakers. He's driven back inside his own blue line. Four checking pressure comes from Ockamp on him. This puck is launched up ice, reeled in by Caleb Imparent, well inside his blue line. Nassar waits, bats the puck up the far boards. Imparent recovers, D to D pass to Moritzen. Here's Moritzen up the middle. Chasing the puck in to the near corner of the Quaker zone. It's brought back out, a shot from Jackson Younger off the Cranston setup. Takes a hop wide. Cranston converges with Krimlish in the far corner of the Quaker zone. Younger steps up to try to protect, but it's taken away from him by Nassor. Here's a one-on-one. -on -one. Parker Nassor pile drives toward the net. Couldn't get a clean shot away. Puck ended up behind the cage, and this is chipped free by Kilheffer. Rather, that was Andrew Musser, the nine. Looked an awful lot like a six from the angle that we're at. The sleeve numbers lacking for aperture. So eights and sixes and nines and zeros even from distance all look mighty similar. Cranston tries to line up a shot from the top of the left circle. Two and a half minutes into the hockey game. Here comes Hudak the other direction for the Quakers. A stick check from Musser directs the puck into the corner. This thrown in from long distance by Bacalau. The follow-up chance at the far boards off the stick of Jack Wolf goes into the protective netting behind netminers C.J. Ulmer and out of play with 14.06 to go in the first period of a nothing-nothing hockey game. Quakers in their away gray sweaters traveling right to left in the first period. The Central Penn Panthers and their home whites moving it from left to right. With their bench on the left side from our perspective. Here at the Bandbox Regency Ice Rink. Keegan Zelko rolls the puck in behind the Quakers goal. Hudak brings it out the far side but can't walk it out of the zone. He absorbs a check. Gives the puck away. Long shot came in from Connor Stewart. Caught and held by Rogacki for a break in the action with 13.36 to go in the first period. Face off to Rogacki's right. Goes the way of the Quakers. But Thane Call recovers at center. The advance of the Panthers rolled offside. And those seven seconds did not come off the clock. So a little bit of bonus hockey here on this Lancaster Sunday afternoon. Hurst winds up hard shot off Rogacki's leg pad. Ends up in the near corner. Here's Kilheffer in the high slot. He tried to bring one down for a shot attempt, but he bobbled the puck briefly, and Caden Canal took it from him. Quakers guilty of an icing with 13.09 to go in the first period. And they'll surrender a defensive zone draw. Belknap in across from Wolf. Lost in the faceoff circle, but Imparent gloved the puck down at the point to preserve territory for the Panthers. Four minutes have gone by in the first period. Wolf clears. Aukamp re enters. Hacked at by Fullerton. The shot from 35 feet blockered away by Rogacki. Kill Heffer. Battles for the puck in neutral territory, but the Quakers generate a two on two. The drop pass came to Wolf. Off the stick of Wesley Miller, but no shot was available for Wolf to take in the high slot. Aukamp recovers for Central Penn after Miller was checked off his feet right at the Panthers' blue line. Lucas gets the puck back from Aukamp. The give and go resulted in a high wide shot from the top of the left circle. Miller brings this back through neutral territory, slowed up by Imparent. Aukamp pokes the puck up the far boards, holding skate contact was Lucas. 
to ensure an onside entry. And now Peyton Moritzson steps up to offer heavy forechecking pressure in the near corner of the Quaker zone. Smartly, they play the puck up the far side, back allow, let it on into traffic toward Nassau, but to no avail. Moritzson swats this puck back towards center. It's brought back by Anderson. Lucas recovers for the Panthers. Give and go up the middle. Lucas off his backhand, shovels this behind the Quakers' goal. O'Neill can't slam the puck free. Musser once again protects the left point. Puck caromed in front of the Quakers' bench. Icing waved off on Stevenson's long clear. Lucas and Moritzson back allow. Stymies Lucas at the top of the far circle and clears the puck back as far as the central pen blue line and then some. Where Younger left it for Musser. Back allow couldn't play the puck cleanly. Icing waved off as he fans on at his own blue line. Joseph Bacalao recovers, works it ahead to Wolf. Two on two. Wolf shot. Blockered down and away by Ulmer. Wolf pursues the puck again. Ulmer freezes. And we've got a break in the action with 10.38 to go in the first period. Delaware Hockey Night is brought to you by the law office of Long and Greenberg, opening their doors in February to provide representation for personal injury and workers' compensation cases. The Law Office of Long and Greenberg, presenting sponsors of Delaware Hockey Night in 2023. Zelko chips the puck behind the West Town goal under significant back-checking heat. Stewart's tied up by Soster and Hudak. While Soster offered that pressure on Stewart. The Quakers tried to streak up ice. And now Ezekiel Hershey is ruled off for slashing away from the play. So a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill begins for the Central Penn Panthers. Schedule your first cleaning by visiting DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Wolf fires a cross-ice pass. It comes to Hudak at the point. That long shot blocked down by Fane Call, clogging the mid-slot. Wolf's backhand not enough to preserve attacking position for the Quakers. It's worked back up ice by Hudak. Now it comes in to Culp. Anthony Culp's got a wicked shot. A backhand from Canal on the doorstep. Handled cleanly by Ulmer. Wolf around to Hudak. He steps up to the top of the right circle. His shot from 35 feet. Caught and held by C.J. Ulmer for a pause in play. With 9.22 to go in the first period. 1.17 left on the Quakers' power play. And a nil-nil hockey game. Good puck moving off the draw around the horn by the West Town Quakers. Trying to work the puck free was Jackson Cranston up the near wall, and he did. Canal circles behind his own goal, carries the puck up ice, Culp stays on side. Canal switches to his backhand, dumps the puck in, but it comes back into neutral territory. Cranston tries to race it down, but a stick lift from Nassau regained possession for the Quakers. 40 seconds left on the power play. We're nearing the halfway point of the first period. Culp puts on the brakes at the outside of the near circle. Reaching Cranston, swatted the puck away from him. Wolf leaves this across ice. Stepping up to the dot was Soster. His shot caught and held by Ulmer for a break in the action. With half the period complete, 25 seconds left on the Quaker power play and a nothing nothing hockey game from Regency Ice Rink. Fullerton and Belknap took the draw. 
Hurst, Younger, and Musser, the other penalty killers for the Panthers. Anderson stick handles in the near corner, challenged by Hurst. He leaves it below the goal, but Fullerton bobbled briefly. That gave Musser a chance to pounce on him. They're tied up for the puck. Trying to extract it was Anderson. Musser protects. He's got the puck trapped at the kick plate directly behind his netminder. Penalty has expired. Younger joins the fray as well, and Musser muscles it free. Sean Stevenson recovers beyond center. Fires a cross-ice pass. Zone not gained by the Quakers. They're ruled offside with seven minutes and 45 seconds to go in opening period play. Planning for retirement doesn't just happen overnight. For 35 years, Limestone Pension Associates has helped small businesses craft and administer pension plans for their workforces. Learn more at limestonepension.net. Hershey gave the puck away to Stevenson. It is tied up in front of the scorer's table and a penalty is whistled with 7.34 to go. Make it 7.35 to go in the first period. This goes against Anthony Culp. So at the 9.25 mark of the first period, the Central Penn Panthers head to their first primo power play. Next time you're at Iceworks or Fred Rust Arena, be sure to stop into your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Or order your next party tray online at primohoagies.com. It's not just a hoagie, it's a Primo. Lucas works the puck net front. It's loose in front of Rogacki. He scrambles back into the net to deny Cranston on the doorstep. Lucas up the right dots. Gets a stick from Bacalau, slowing up his momentum. Musser to Lucas, shot into the pads of Rogacki. He gathers the puck in for a pause in play with 6.54 to go in the first period. 1.19 left on the power play clock. And fresh legs coming on for both the Panthers and the Quakers. Belknap and Wolf in to take the draw. To the right of Aiden Rogacki. Young to Kepley, working the perimeter of the zone up the far side. Back it comes to Young. He throws a shot in from long range right into Rogacki's glove for another break in action with 6.41 to go in the first period. Zach Belknap and Jack Wolf take the draw, shot off the draw, rang off the post. Call held at the near point. Krimlish clears, lunging for the puck. It was Jordan Young, but he failed to protect. Call, stretch pass, tipped by Hurst. Into the far corner of the Quaker zone, Hudak races the puck down. And Young back inside his blue line recovers for Central Penn with half a minute left on the penalty to Anthony Culp. Zach Belna with space carries the puck up the left side. Miller reaches, slows him up, gains the puck at center, flips it in from long distance. It's sticked down by Ulmer. And now cleared up ice by Imperent. It comes back courtesy Wesley Miller. Long shot batted away by Ulmer. Nassor from the far corner. Couldn't negotiate a host of Panthers in front of him. And Caleb Imperent turns play back up ice for Central Penn with 5.18 to go in the opening frame. We are yet scoreless from Regency Ice Rink. The one-timer from Jackson Aukamp wobbled wide. O'Neill leaves this puck up the far boards. And the shot in from Hudak 
was sticked aside by Ulmer. Hudak confronted in his own zone, played the puck across to Soster, who gains up the left wing boards. The shot from Culp was stick checked by Zelko into the back netting, giving us a pause in play with 4.42 to go in opening period action. There's nothing all American quite like a good old fashioned barbecue. Since barbecue and jerky brings the most tender and flavorful pulled pork brisket and barbecue chicken to the tri state area. And they're sure to make your next team event or special occasion a truly All-American one. Textbook check from Hudak slows up Caleb and Parent just inside the line. Quakers regain, 4.20 to go in the opening period. Fullerton drop pass to Culp. His shot stick checked by Hershey. Sails wide to the far corner. This puck is cleared out with some help off the glass by Imparent. Hudak's re-entry is good, but as he was bodied off the puck just above the blue line, the counterattack of the Central Penn Panthers became that much easier for the boys in white to manage. Puck is tied up now in the corner with Cranston and Moritzen battling for it. It's brought back to Culp. He stick handles at his own blue line to try to generate some space. Soster held skate contact. Culp checked by Cranston, separated from the puck, and Younger recovers for the Panthers with three and a half minutes to go in opening period play. There is still no score. Lucas off the cross slot feed. Corrals the puck off the side boards. Drops it back to Younger. Musser crashing the net, tries to jam the puck past Rogacki, but to no avail. Final 3-10 of the opening period. Musser holds the point, rolls the puck low to Cranston. It comes back high to Musser. And a mid considerable net front commotion. The Central Penn Panthers get on the board. We'll watch this again in slow motion. Jackson Younger with the shot. Moritzen looming net front. Put away the rebound with two minutes and 55 seconds to go. In the opening frame. Cranston's going to get credit for the secondary assist. It was Morrison from Younger and Cranston at 14.05 to put the Central Penn Panthers up 1-0. And a hold signaled with two minutes and 19 seconds to go. We'll send Brady Kilheffer to the sin bin. And the Central Penn Panthers to the Delaware Trash Can Cleaning Penalty Kill. Schedule your first cleaning today. Visit DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Hudak to Wolf up the near boards. Wolf shoots and he scores. So a quick power play goal from the Quakers. has made this a 1-0 hockey game. It took them all of eight seconds. On the power play to level the score. Assisted by number two, Kevin Clark, and number 91, Anthony Cole. 
So Hudak and Culp with the assists on the Wolf power play goal at 1449 in the first period. Hershey and Wolf square off over the center dot. And the Quakers work up ice. Stretch pass intended for Culp was tucked behind the goal. Soster holds the left point. His shot from long range, sticked by Young, holding close to home behind the net. Hershey has stood up at his own blue line. A punishing hit on him. Well over the bounds of what's acceptable, and with a minute and 18 seconds to go in this first period. The Quakers are gonna or the Quakers are gonna go on the penalty kill with Hudak sent off for roughing. Primo power play time for the Central Penn Panthers. Visit your local neighborhood Primo Hokies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Or order your next party tray online at primohokies.com. Trainers being helped back the opposite side of the ice after providing attention on the central pen bench. Play now able to resume. And it starts with an attacking zone faceoff for the Panthers. Controlled by Lucas. Aw Camp steps up, shot from the top of the left circle into Rogacki's pads. Lucas holds the zone. At the near point, we've entered the last minute of the first period. Moritzson gives it away. Fullerton backhands the puck free as Aukamp failed to protect the zone. Lucas to Aukamp, back across near side it comes. Imparent works the puck ahead to Cranston, but he launches this in. The Quakers zone with Jackson Aukamp yet offside. So we'll start back in the neutral zone with 34 seconds remaining in opening period play. Central Penn and Westtown tied one aside. Cranston leaves the puck to him, Parent, who dumps it in over the Quakers blue line. Soster lofts it the other way. Nassour tries to race down the puck. Culp lines up a shot through traffic. It's stick checked by Imparent, the second one, too. And caught for a clean save by CJ Ulmer with 13 seconds to go in opening period action. An evenly matched game on paper. Westtown 9-5-2. Central Penn 10, 6, and 0 coming into this game. And it's evenly matched on the ice as well. Final five seconds of the period. Anthony Culp drop pass. Nassau's shot was blocked. The horn sounds, and the first period has reached its conclusion. 17 minutes in the books. The Quakers and the Panthers tied up 1-1. Delaware Hockey Night presented by the Law Office of Long and Reaver. There's nothing all-American quite like a good old-fashioned barbecue. Sid's Barbecue and Jerky brings the most tender and flavorful pulled pork, brisket, and barbecue chicken to the tri-state area and is sure to turn your next gathering into a truly all-American event. Visit SIDS on Ridge Road in Claymont, Delaware, or place your next catering order at SIDSBBQAndJerky.com.
Let's face it, saving for retirement doesn't happen overnight. It takes planning, and Limestone Pension Associates has spent the past 35 years helping small businesses do just that. Limestone specializes in crafting, planning, and handling the day-to-day -day administration of qualified pension plans tailor-fit to your company's needs and objectives. To schedule a consultation, call 302-479-8817 or visit limestonepension.net to learn more. Time for the second period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Thank you, Norm Borg. Welcome back into Delaware Hockey Night, presented by the Law Office of Long and Greenberg. We're 1-1 through 17 minutes of play. Second period action brought to you by the Hooper family, longtime supporters of University of Delaware Blue Hens Hockey, and of today's coverage of the Central Penn Panthers taking on the West Town Quakers in this DBHL 18 AA matchup. Musser tries to work the puck forward. It ends up in Hurst skates. The shot on the doorstep from Captain Matthew Kepley is covered by Rogacki for a break in the action. Following faceoff comes to Rogacki's right. Zach Belknap in for the draw. Across from Fullerton. Younger works it to Kepley. Back to Younger. Around the horn it goes to Hurst. Good puck movement. Cross slot pass ricochets off the near boards. Younger could not hold the point. He waits for everyone to tag up. And now Kepley walks back in to the Quaker zone after the power play had run out. Kevin Hudak regains the puck from deep in his zone, carries it up ice. Throws it off the backboards. It ricochets to the far wall where Kepley and Canal get tied up. Kepley clears. Bacalao recovers for the Quakers at his blue line. He takes the short hop across neutral territory, at least enough to gain red. Only 17 feet from blue line to red line here at Regency. He gains that line before dumping the puck in to nullify any threat of an icing. And now Soster works to hold the left point for the Quakers after a successful dump and chase. Musser rolls the puck behind the goal. It caroms up the near side where Bacalao could not protect. But his Quakers will get an attacking zone faceoff coming their way with a minute and 48 seconds gone in the second period as the Central Penn Panthers were guilty of an icing. Faceoff came to the left of Ulmer. And the Quakers are pushed back to their own blue line and then saw. A failed breakout results in a long call shot, which was off its target. Moritzson double teamed in the far corner, protects the puck to call around the young it goes. He throws the puck in from long range. It rings off the backboards and comes back to Thane Call once again. This one wobbles after being deflected in net front traffic and is cleared up ice by the Quakers' Jack Wolf. Young drives back in. In the far corner, that puck was lofted by Wesley Miller over the glass and out of play. No, that was Logan Soster who lofted that puck over the glass and out of play 
deep in the Quaker zone. So a faceoff will come to Rogacki's left with 14-16 to go in the second period. Nassor and Hershey line up for the draw. Zeke Hershey wins. And Thane Call gets the puck in deep again. Hershey throws the puck toward the net. Nobody home for a redirect chance. Zelko tied up in the corner. Hershey with a net front feed from Hurst. Couldn't connect on the doorstep. He was canceled out by Sean Stevenson's presence at the top of the blue paint. Young cleared. Stevenson volleyed the puck back. He connects with Nassar headed the other direction. Nassar couldn't run the gauntlet behind the cage as he's bodied into the glass by Jackson Aukamp, or rather Zelko it was. Aukamp wasn't even on the ice. And Ezekiel Hershey playing the body as well and crossing the line as he's rung up for a roughing minor with 326 elapsed in the second period. So a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill begins for the Central Penn Panthers. Zeke Hershey guilty of roughing at 326, and the Panthers guilty of an icing. 14 seconds into their penalty kill. Culp and Belknap take the drop to the right of Ulmer after the central pen icing. Hurst swats the puck beyond the reach of Hudak and drives play back in to the Quaker zone. This shot from Hudak was high and wide. Hurst sets up a one-on-one -on -one the other way, now a one-on-two as Hudak rushes on the back check to join the play. Hudak in the corner near side. Floats the puck ahead to Wolf. Wolf comes in up the middle. Leaves this to Nassar, who absorbs a Hurst shoulder check. Culp protects at the left point, throws the puck off the near wall. But this is cleared back out by the Panthers. With four and a half minutes gone in the second period, a 1-1 deadlock before us here at the Regency Ice Rink. Culp leaves the puck to Wolf. Centering pass blocked by Aukamp, and we don't want to know where that got him. Aukamp stays with the play, three on one. Belknap just stayed on side. Give and go, and a goal! Aukamp stays with the play. despite taking a puck where we'd rather not think about. And his give and go with Zach Belknap. Results in a go ahead shorthanded goal. Five minutes into the second period now a 2-1 Panthers hockey game. Looks like Aukamp's favoring his, his wrist or some such. And we'll try to keep an eye on Aukamp. As far as re-entry to the game is concerned. So five minutes into the second period, the Panthers growl sounds and 
was Jackson Aukamp. A textbook definition of perseverance. That put the Panthers up 2-1, and now things spilling over in the neutral zone as Musser tries to intervene as a peacemaker. Kepley and Hudak standing idly by. This all came after Ryan Anderson took a punishing hit in the neutral zone. Plenty to be sorted out here as Anders, as Kepley, Younger, and Anderson all make their way to the penalty box. Friends, if you're like me, healthy living is important, and Delaware Trash Can Cleaning can help you and your family stay healthy at home with periodic sanitization and disinfecting of your trash and recycling bins. Schedule your first cleaning by visiting Delaware Trash Can Cleaning. Dot com. There's a new gold standard for digital media solutions for small businesses. 412 Communications offers web and graphic design, social media consultation, public relations, writing and editing services, and multimedia solutions like the broadcast you're watching right now. To learn more about how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve, visit 412 Communications. Dot com. Watching the game on Delaware Hockey Night or tailgating at Fred Rust Arena next time you're at the University of Delaware, whichever the case might be, score big and serve in style with Primo Hoagies party trays and sampler platters. There is no crowd pleaser quite like Primo Hoagies made with only the highest quality Thumans meats and cheese sliced fresh to order served on Primo's award-winning seeded rolls. You get the best tasting hoagies in the area and save yourself the prep time. Stop into your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, or order your next party tray online at primohoagies.com. It's not just a hoagie, it's a Primo. So after all that, a five-minute major goes up on the board against Central Penn. A long Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill coming up for them. And we'll owe you the particulars as soon as they're made available. We have a penalty of number 16. So Brady Kilheffer was sent off for boarding. And the Quakers strike on the power play. Wolf. Leaves this puck to Hudak. He launched it in from the point. And that looked like Caden Canal. Put away the rebound. So coincidental minors for roughing as well. At the 541 stoppage, Robert Fullerton for the Quakers, Jackson Younger for the Panthers. So Canal's equalizer came with 10.50 to go. Four minutes remain on this Quakers power play. Being a major penalty, the entirety of the time must be served. A power play goal. Cuts a minor penalty short, not a major. 
Parker Nassor in for the faceoff. Across from Lucas to the right of C.J. Ulmer, the Panthers netminer. Soster recovers behind the Quakers' goal after the Panthers cleared. Soster tries to stretch the, pus, the puck up the middle, but it will come back and icing. O'Neill couldn't bring it in. Nine fifty to go. In the second period. Parent could not hold the zone at the point. He was pushed back into the neutral zone. And now Tyler Lucas leads the re-entry for the shorthanded Panthers. He'll be down a man for the next three minutes and change. Hudak cross ice pass. Miller stripped of the puck by Musser. In comes Musser again, but he overskates it at the half wall. Soster tries to pounce on the vulcanized rubber. Hudak directs it away from him. Kepley regains in the corner. He gives it away to Hudak below the net. O'Neill, the recipient of the breakout pass. And up come the Quakers now on the offensive, led by Parker Nassour. Nassour stripped of the puck at the dot by Imperent. But he turns back the other way, leading a two-on-two -two for the Panthers. Crashing the net was Lucas, but a stick check in traffic tight. Took his shot away from him. Over eight minutes have gone by in the second period. Two minutes and 17 seconds by our count on this Quakers power play. Hudak winds up from 40 feet. Holding on for the save was C.J. Ulmer with eight minutes and 37 seconds to go in the second period. Panthers and Quakers deadlocked to a side. Faceoff comes to the left of Ulmer. Stevenson holds center point for the Quakers. After the faceoff win, back a loud shot was wide, but Culp finishes on the welcome mat to get a second on this major power play for the West Town Quakers. Here's the slow mo. Bacalao had the long shot from the point. Culp on the welcome mat. Finishes at the 8.32 mark. Of the second period. Give Caden Canal the secondary assist. Setting up back allow with the initial shot at the right point. Almer's net dislodged, so play is halted with 8.01 to go. In the second period, we're just past halfway of the second half of our Sunday doubleheader here on Delaware Hockey Night from the Regency Ice Rink. Quakers with two power play goals on the Kilheffer Major have turned a 2-1 deficit into a 3-2 lead. Back allows stepping up at the right point. Felt pressure, decided to use the entirety of the ice. Stevenson couldn't connect with Wolf, coming back out of the zone. Delayed penalty coming up against the Quakers. This Belknap and Hurst tried to make some shorthanded magic happen. They will go up on level pegging though for the next minute and 12 seconds. Quakers went down a man with 7.40 to go in the second. 
Lake Ridge Minor Penalty Number 59, Sean Stevenson. Two minutes for high sticking. High sticking on Stevenson was the penalty. We're four on four for the next 70 seconds. Musser's drop pass to Hurst was broken up by Miller. He heads to Hudak, a one-on-one. -on -one. Hudak lost control of the puck. Younger steered him to the corner. He throws it net front. Hurst blocks it away. Belknap back the other direction. His momentum carried him into the zone before the puck got there. And this is called back offside with seven minutes to go in the second period. The athletic trainer has certainly got her steps in this morning. She's been back and forth and back and forth from concourse side to bench side and every other which way here during this game. Lucas's shot off the setup from Cranston was high and wide. Younger could not hold the left point. Musser in a race for the puck with Culp back in the far corner of the central pen zone. It's brought out by Lucas beyond center. Cranston, desperation shot wide in the near corner. Nassour gives it away to Cranston, the one-timer from Lucas into the pads of Rogacki. Rebound controlled at the far side by Anthony Culp. Very short power play begins for the Panthers, 30 seconds on this primo power play for them. And they'll have to start from behind their own goal. Lucas takes a check at the near half boards. Manages to maintain the puck. Now Young offers some aid. The cross ice pass to Musser is poke checked off its line right at the central pen line. Lucas waits for Moritzen to tag up. They enter together. Cranston posts up net front. And now the Quakers are back to full strength as well. The shot from Lucas was wide. O'Neill the other way. Denied by Ulmer. Krimlish. Stretches the puck ahead to O'Neill. It's taken away by Zeke Hershey. Krimlish takes his shoulder behind the net, gives the puck away to Peyton Moritzen. Krimlish plays the body on him. We're down to the final five minutes of the second period of a 3-2 hockey game. The Westtown Quakers trying to steal one on the road against Central Penn. Long shot caught and held by C.J. Ulmer with 4.44 to go in second period competition. Parker Nassar and Ezekiel Hershey will contest the faceoff, which brings play to its resumption. And to all of you tuning in here on Delaware Hockey Night today, we are Grateful to have you as part of our Sunday matinee audience from the Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Culp to Nassar. He walks in, throws the puck behind the cage. It's held in by Krimlish at the point. The Nassar shot is in. The Quakers have gone up 4-2. Logan Krimlish from Nassau. Opens fire from the right point. It was Nassau who got the rebound off the initial Krimlish shot. Making this now a 4-2 game. 
substitution by number 22, Robert Fullerton, and number 92, Joseph Sakalaya. Time of the goal, 419 in the second period. So the assists officially go to Fullerton and Bacalao. On the Quakers' insurance goal, they're up 4-2. Over Central Penn. Delayed penalty coming up against Central Penn. As Culp tries to work through the Panthers' zone. Musser touches up, and that gives us a break in the action with 3.38 to go. Interference the call with 3.38 remaining in the period. And the Central Penn Panthers are headed back to the Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill as Zachary Belknap is sent off to feel two minutes of shame. Schedule your first cleaning today at DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Panthers minor penalty number 86. Zachary Belknap, two minutes for number two. Minus penalty, 338. Hudak forced back into the Quaker zone. Starts play up from left to right. Wolf, head man pass. Canals shot, a slapper which sailed wide. Hudak holds the right point. He plays the puck across to the far side where waiting was Jack Wolf. Is thrown off the corner boards near side. Controlled there by Nassour. Wolf's shot from long distance. Waffle boarded aside by Ulmer. And Cranston pushes Wolf back to his own blue line after he failed to protect the zone off the rebound. Hudak around the horn from Culp to Wolf. Long shot stick checked offline. The follow up near side. Coming courtesy Parker Nassour. Ends up in the glove of C.J. Ulmer with 2.41 to go in the second period. A minute and three seconds to go. On the Belknap interference minor and the Quakers with a 4-2 lead over the Central Penn Panthers. Faceoff is at Ulmer's left. Soster holds the point. He works the puck in low. Miller battles for position, so does O'Neill. This is wristed free by Kepley, turned back in by Stevenson, protecting the left point for the Quakers. Wesley Miller in front, was double teamed, couldn't get a shot through. With 30 seconds left on the Quakers' power play, Stevenson Carried the puck up the near boards to regain neutral territory. It was swatted back in by the Panthers. In that short neutral zone, four guys can employ a pretty effective trap in those tight quarters. Final 105 seconds in the second period. Miller works the puck in low. It's tied up in the near corner now of the Quakers zone. Trying to work it free is Thane Call. Fullerton digging. He and Call get tied up away from the puck. And the pushing and shoving continues. By rule, you can't play the body on a player who is engaged in a puck battle. That was new in the USA Hockey Rulebook in 2021. Central Penn coach Eric Lowry wanting the first penalty on Fullerton for playing the body in a puck battle. You can't do that. But Thane Call is rung up as well. These coming at 1533. in the second period. Now the officials are discussing the matter, what they saw, and making sure that what they saw 
and what they assess correspond. Coincidental minors at the 15-33 mark. Fullerton cross-checking, call Ruffick. We've made it to the final minute of period number two. We're five on five with the Quakers up 4-2 over Central Penn. Long, hard shot from Wolf was off the back glass. This cleared the other way. Recovered by Soster, Moritzen pursues him. Cranston with a textbook check. Moritzen works the puck back to him, Parent. Around to the far side it goes. Ahead to Cranston. And then he comes to lead this Central Penn counterattack. Shot from the top of the right circle was stick checked high into the netting over the near corner and out of play with 25 seconds to go in the second period. And the Quakers on the defensive, maintaining a 4-2 lead over the Central Penn Panthers. Ezekiel Hershey and Parker Nassour took the draw. Back allows, got the puck trapped in the far corner. Aukamp. From the right point, launches the puck in over the crossbar. It ricochets off the glass to the near corner. Zelko, confronted by O'Neill, couldn't keep the momentum going at the near side. O'Neill tipped the puck over the glass and out of play, so a face-off will occur at the near dot with 10 seconds to go in second period play. Hershey and Nassau meet again. A fair face-off delivered. Zelko in the far corner. Tries to get the puck net front for one last chance this period. The horn sounds as the Quakers clear. And the second period is in the books. Through 34 minutes. The West Town Quakers have a 4 2 lead over the Central Penn Panthers. We'll be back after the second intermission on DHA. Think about it. The trash and recycling bins in our homes, even with normal use, are places where harmful bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli can multiply by the thousands. But like anyone, you want to keep your home and your family as healthy as possible. Delaware Trash Can Cleaning can help. They sanitize your trash cans with high-pressure hot water jets that can kill over 99% of the germs and bacteria in your cans in just a few minutes. To schedule your first cleaning, call 302-310-9075 or visit DelawareTrashCanCleaning.com. Hoagies, made only with the highest quality Thumans meats and cheese, sliced fresh to order and served on Primo's award-winning seated rolls. You get the best tasting hoagies in the area and save yourself the prep time. Stop into your local neighborhood Primo Hoagies on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, or order your tray online at primohoagies.com. It's not just a hoagie, it's a Primo. It's time for the third period. Let's head back upstairs to James Witherite. Third period about to get underway. From the Regency Ice Arena in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where through 34 minutes, the Westtown Quakers have built up a 4-2 lead over the Central Penn Panthers. James Witherite joining you from Lancaster, Pennsylvania for today's Delaware Hockey Night doubleheader as part of our DVHL coverage here in 2023.
Quakers ruled offside, 25 seconds into the third. Nassau and Belknap take the center ice draw. Musser works the puck to Kepley. Back hands it up the near side. Joseph Bacalao recovers for the Quakers. He gets the puck back from Krimlish behind his own goal. Krimlish to Parker Nassau. He tips it from center into the central pen zone where Musser bulldozes forward through neutral ice. This puck played by a high stick, that of Matthew Kepley, and as such, with 55 seconds gone in the third period, the Panthers will surrender a defensive zone draw. Faceoff comes to the left of C.J. Ulmer. And it's worth noting that two of the Quakers' goals came in a major power play. Take those away, it's all even. Jack Wolf couldn't get past C.J. Ulmer, who scrambles to freeze the puck with 15.49 to go in the third. Faceoff comes to Ulmer's right. Wolf leaves it back to Stevenson. Hurst recovers for the Panthers, flips the puck in behind the Quakers' goal. Hudak is there to recover for the boys in gray and teal. Kevin Hudak finds space, backhands the puck ahead to Culp. Two on two, this entrance slowed up by the stick of Thane Call. Stevenson. Winds up with a slapper from the left half wall, but missed his target entirely. Hudak nearly decapitated the low official who had to duck to get out of position. This is cleared. Stevenson recovers at his blue line. The advance of Jack Wolf premature and offside with 15.06 to go in regulation. Faceoff takes place just above the Quakers' blue line. Lucas won the draw over Nassau, left the puck back to Aukamp. He floats it in the Quakers' zone. Fullerton drives this back into the Panthers' end. Cranston tries to tie him up. The centering pass sails beyond the reach of Miller. Holding the point was Krimlish. Long shot was wide. Nassour throws this off the far glass. The net front setup attempt from Fullerton was sticked away by Aukamp. And the long shot that comes in from center point is caught and held by Ulmer with 14.18 to go in the third period. This is offside yet again. Intentional offside rule, so the faceoff comes all the way back into the Quakers zone. They lead 4-2. Here in this battle for fourth place in the DPHL standings and a likely playoff preview. Net behind Rogaki is dislodged. Both teams have played 16 games to this point in the season. A win here for the Quakers, should they preserve it, will lift them into fourth place. Above Central Penn, but behind Delaware. Moritzson crashing the net. His shot is stick-checked into the netting behind Rogacki and out of play. Yeah. 
Faceoff comes to the right of Aiden Rogacki. Krimlish behind the goal, challenged directly by Cranston. Caroms the puck up the near side, but he can't get it free. Moritzson tries to jam one in past Rogacki, but is denied on the welcome mat. 13.37 remaining in regulation. Faceoff comes to Rogacki's right. And Lucas is unable to steamroll forward. This is cleared by Wolf and will come back an icing with 13.21 to go. Panthers trying to put together a stout battle here against the Quakers. Who with a three goal second period have gone up 4-2. Hudak accelerates through the neutral zone. Younger pinches him to the corner. Hudak from the corner throws the puck toward Ulmer, who freezes for a pause with 13.02 to go. Hershey is in for the draw to the left of his netminder across from Jack Wolf. Connor Stewart works play back in to the Quaker zone. Hudak tries to dodge a check from Stewart amid his breakout attempt. It was foiled ultimately as Jackson Younger protected the point for Central Penn. 12 and a half minutes to go. Quakers float the puck up ice. This will come back in icing. as that stretch pass was let go before center. Sometimes you've just got to work with what you've got. Culp and Miller steamroll forward. Almer with the save. Holds on with 12 minutes and 17 seconds to go. So after the icing, the Quakers have gained themselves an attacking zone draw and Fullerton controls the puck in the far corner. The cross ice feed to Bacalao is botched. He draws back in to his own blue line. To try to reset. Hudak couldn't connect with Miller. Thane Call blocks the puck down at the central pen line. And now the Panthers are guilty of an icing with 11.46 to go in regulation. Delaware Hockey Night is brought to you by the Law Office of Long and Greenberg, opening their doors in February to provide representation for personal injury and workers' compensation cases. Stay tuned for more regarding the law office of Long and Greenberg as they prepare to provide a new chapter of representation to First Davis. Eleven twenty to go. We can surmise Thane Call is not particularly pleased about the tripping call at 540 in the third period. So a Delaware trash can cleaning penalty kill starts up. For the Panthers. 
corner. And Culp works the puck back in up the left wing boards. Nassour took game from the top of the right circle off the cross ice pass, which was tipped off its intended line. Wolf to Soster, around to Nassour the other way. Back to Soster. Good puck movement around the top of the zone. Now the umbrella starts to collapse, but the cross ice feed from Nassour didn't make it to Wolf. Wolf's shot blocked by Ockamp, who's slow to get back on his feet. Nassour leaves this to Soster, but that puck trickles out of the zone. So Soster has to wait. Culp was the last to tag up. They re-enter five as one. Lucas strips the puck in the high slot, walks it back up ice for central pen. Half the penalty to call has expired. We're nearing the seven minute mark of the third period. Quakers with a 4-2 lead over central pen. Wolf spins to try to dodge a Cranston hit. Now Culp's got the puck, the base of the central pen bench. He leaves it to Soster, center point, who barely maintained. Down low to Wolf. The trigger man was Parker Nassar. His hard wrist shot was wide. Wolf works it low, stick checked by Cranston. Imparent plays the body on Nassar, tries to kick the puck free. This is batted out of the central pen zone with 10 seconds remaining on the call penalty. Seven seconds, now five. Now the final three, and with two to make up, the central pen Panthers are back to full strength off a good kill. Miller herded by Hurst into the corner, tried to center the puck, but it was blocked away by Younger. Now cleared. There is no icing here. Race on for the vulcanized rubber. Hurst converges with Stevenson at the goal line. Belknap works it low. Hurst is taken down behind the net by Stevenson. The second shove drew the ire of the officials. Shot at the other end, all for naught. Sean Stevenson rolled off for roughing. Eight twenty into the third period. So it's primo power play time again for the Central Penn Panthers. but the uphill battle remains. Moritz in the low man, Lucas. Cranston, Younger, and Musser the last of the five. resumes with an attacking zone face-off for the Panthers. Younger holds the left point, works the puck to Morrison, high to Lucas. Musser, back to Lucas. Musser, cross-ice pass is stick-checked off its intended path. Morrison protects to Lucas, who winds up from long range. Rogacki got enough of that. To direct it away from Cranston. Younger, Musser, shot right in to Rogacki's chest protector, and he holds for a pause with 8.03 to go in regulation. We got about three bars of cool in the gang. And then the hip hop takes over.
Lucas throws this off the boards. Aukamp set up a shot from Imparent at the dot, which was wobbled wide. Imparent feeds to Lucas again. The power play will set up from square one yet again. Lucas mishandled the puck. Canal nearly stole it from him. Imparent works this low. The centering feed from Aukamp was intercepted but not cleared. Aukamp sets up a one-timer from Lucas Moritz and tries to dig the puck free. Frimlish takes exception. And the official intervenes. The conversation continues well after the whistle between Fullerton and Moritzson, but they head back to their respective benches. 40 seconds left on this Panthers power play. Kepley works the corner, gets the puck low to Belknap. Aukamp, Imparent, and Kepley, the others. Hurst is down low, puck bounced in from off the post. Belknap from downtown has made this a one goal game. Zachary Belknap. And we'll give it to you on the slow mo. It looked like it bounced off the post, off Rogaki, and then in. So 9.59. And boom! Just like that, the Quakers come roaring right back to make it a two-goal game again. Watching it on the slow-mo, looked like it was Shane O'Neill to get the insurance goal for the Quakers. 6.40, six remaining now in the third period. It's going to be credited to Wolf from Miller. And now Wolf is off for tripping. So again, with two to make up, the Central Penn Panthers are on the Primo power play. Schedule. Next party tray pickup at primohogies.com, or you can just stop into your local neighborhood Primo on Baltimore Pike in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Musser works inside the line to Younger. This thrown through the slot, back to Belknap, Musser to Hurst. Kepley mans the low area. He's bodied behind the goal by Hudak. Puck sneaks free, one-on-one -on -one for the Quakers, but Musser swept the puck away from Canal's reach. Canal leaves it back to Hudak a second time. Inside six minutes to go in this hockey game, Quakers with a 5-3 lead over the Central Penn Panthers. Two goals from Jack Wolf, leading the Quakers' crusade of the Central Penn Panthers. Five eighteen to go. Close-up shot. Musser tries to dig the puck free. 
He can't get it past Rogacki, and Soster has a few words for Musser as well after the whistle. We turn our attention to high school hockey tomorrow here on Delaware Hockey Night as Salazi Adam plays host to Avon Grove, airtime 7.35, game time 7.45 from Studio One at Fred Rust Arena. Five and change to go. Aw camp from the point into Rogacki's glove. It's been a very stop and go hockey game. A lot of glove saves, very few rebounds let in by, or I should say allowed in general by either Netmeyer. Moritzson just inside the line. Throws this puck in deep, it's slammed back up ice. And this comes back in icing with 4.45 to go in regulation. Face-off is fought into Rogacki's left. One by Lucas, but Aukamp is forced back to his line to recover. Lucas hassled by Anthony Culp. Beat the four checker and now carries the puck through the neutral zone before Nassar lays the body on him and Bacalao tries to stand him up. The official takes a tumble. Lucas to Aukamp on the doorstep. Puck is loose, backhand. Came from Cranston, but it sailed behind the cage. Four minutes to go, another icing against the Quakers. Aiden Rogacki's rebound control has been excellent today. Let very few second chance opportunities even exist. Three on two, Quakers attack. Hard shot from the far side, and Wesley Miller goes wide. Canal dumps the puck low. Young backhands it up the far glass. Hershey fans on the puck as it rolls toward the Quakers' blue line. Now three and a half minutes remaining. Zelko launches this into the far corner. It comes back to Young at the far half wall, but it's taken away from him and walked up ice by Jack Wolf. Wolf gets tied up by Connor Stewart in the far corner. Zelko recovers the puck. Final 190 seconds. His Panthers down 5-3 to the Westtown Quakers. Back allows shot from the point. Was wide, but steered into the corner by Ulmer. In comes Stewart. Drop pass, sails beyond Belknap's reach. Kepley launches one from center point. In off the back glass. Rebound is brought down by Bacalao, cleared back to center. Walked in by Hurst. It's poke checked away from him, Belknap recovers. Hurst carries this over the line. His shot tipped off target by Krimlich. Loose putt corralled by Culp. He's into a one on two up the middle. Culp stood up in the slot by Musser. Chases the puck down in the near corner after he dumped it in. Nassour offers reinforcement, but recovering the puck was Musser. For the Panthers. Ahead to Younger. Further on, it's thrown in by Imper or rather by Hurst. Coming to the final two minutes of play from the Regency Ice Rink. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and our thanks go out to the Central Penn Panthers for their hospitality on this Sunday. Inviting us into their home barn for a DVHL doubleheader. Musser was slowed up, Younger. Across to Hurst. Puck thrown in, trying to finish on the doorstep was Kepley, but to no avail. 
Icing waved off. We've hit the final 90 seconds, and we'll keep an eye on Ulmer to see if the extra attacker is going to take his place. Not at present. As the Quakers move the puck down ice. Aukamp recovers. Chases this into the corner. But it's steered away from his reach by Moritz, or rather, by Soster. Now the extra attacker is on for Central Penn. Lucas, pinched by O'Neill to the corner, puts on the brakes. He tried to set up Belknap net front, but a stick check sent that puck in behind the cage. Moritzson's down low as well. Imparent, manning the point. The opposite point held by Aukamp and an icing with 32 seconds to go. We'll give the Panthers another chance with an attacking zone faceoff coming their way. Down by two in the last minute. The Central Penn Panthers have pulled their goalie in favor of an extra attacker. Belknap to Moritzson on the doorstep. Puck is loose in front, but it's batted free by Fullerton, who held close to home. Miller and Aw can't battle for the puck now in the near corner of the Central Penn zone. Their momentum. Leaves the puck behind, Lucas gathers it in, but the final seconds will tick away before the Panthers can muster any meaningful route. So the Westtown Quakers win 5-3, and they move into sole possession of fourth place in the DVHL 18 AA standings. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back with the Sid's three stars of the game in just a couple moments. Welcome back into Delaware Hockey Night, presented by the Law Office of Long and Greenberg. The Quakers improving to 10-5-2 on the season by way of a 5-3 win over the Central Penn Panthers. Have also taken over fourth place in the DVHL 18 AA standings behind the Delaware Junior Blue Hens. Looking at the Sid's three stars of the game, presented by Sid's Barbecue and Jerky in Claymont, Delaware. Jack Wolf, the number one star, two goals and an assist for the Quakers, Anthony Culp with a goal and two helpers. Second star honors for him, Zachary Belknap. The third star, recording goal and an assist for the Central Penn Panthers who have dropped 10-7-0 on the season. So that will do it for us here from the Regency Ice Rink in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. On behalf of Ray Catolo and the rest of the DHN crew, assistant producer Joe Sindoni. Leighton Worthy, Curtis MacDonald, Rod Allens, Molly Joe Rosen, Josie Billet. This is James Witherite thanking you all for joining us, reminding you that Delaware Hockey Night is a copyrighted production of 412 Communications, all rights reserved. One last time, today's final score. Westtown Quakers, five. Central Penn Panthers, three. Good night to you all from Regency Ice Rink, and thank you.
for joining us for this Sunday Delaware Hockey Night match.